For some reason, I decided to look up weapon collection on YouTube to see what people have and show off. And this popped up. $25,000 weapon collection. So I figured, might as well take a look and comment on it here and there. Uh, I should probably point out that I don't know this guy. I don't have any beef with him. However, I have a rather snarky sense of humor and I'm kind of allergic to wall hangers. So if I come across as mean, that's not the intention. The intention is entertainment. All right. What up, Rep Pack? It's your boy here, King Rep. That's already too much YouTube personality for my taste, so we're just gonna skip ahead. Oh my god. So here is every single pocket knife. Okay. Pocket knives are not weapons, by the way. It kind of irks me when people call pocket knives weapons. They aren't. There are, there are certain knife designs that are intended as weapons. Uh, there are daggers, obviously, which are weapons. But just regular folding knives, not weapons. All the way down, these are all custom camo. Just yep, we got not weapons. I mean, okay, that one at the end, that one all the way to the right. Fair enough. The yeah, others, not so much. And that is all Still not weapons. Here. Now, when we go to the next step, that's when we got Are we a lot of getting two weapons in the next step? The steel. We got a Gerber. We got the mm -hmm. one feet. We got this full carbon. Karambit. There's a Karambit. Okay. That Fiber, is one. little mini knife. Mini nice. knife. <laughs> got a Karambit and the biggest pocket knife you've ever seen, right? Here. No. No. That is not the biggest pocket knife you've ever seen. This is the biggest pocket knife you've ever seen. See? Mine's a lot bigger. I mean, it's debatable whether this is a pocket knife, but hey, I can fit this in cargo pants. It technically fits in a deep pocket. So it's a pocket knife. There you go. Then we got all of these storage slash survival knives. I did have more. Can somebody explain to me the point of owning a bunch of identical things in different colors? I've never understood that. Maybe I'm weird, but... In some cases, you know, with, you know, firearms, for example, I can kind of see owning a few different iterations of different versions of the same model. Like, for example, if you have a Mosin Nagant and you have a Sniper Mosin Nagant as well, okay, fair enough. Or maybe you like one for shooting and one for, I don't know, display, uh, whatever. I, this, I, I, I don't really... I'm not judging, I just don't get it. Like, why would you have so many of the same type? It's like, you might as well have just have paintings. I guess this is kind of the same sort of deal. Maybe, maybe that's how to go about it. Maybe you just get a bunch of blades in all kinds of different paint jobs and different textures and whatever, and you just plaster your wall with it. You just use it as a, like a 3D wallpaper. Barber blade, which is freaking sweet. I don't think you guys have actually seen that. Okay, again, why would you include this in a weapons collection video? No clickbait at all, right? In the video that I can remember. And then we even got the syringe needle that some of you guys might remember. And then down... Okay, that is definitely not a weapon. It shouldn't be. I mean, maybe there's, there's some psychopathic doctors that are salivating at the side of this, but... Hopefully not. And here, we get into the trench blades. We got a okay. freaking... Okay, yep. Finally, we, we got right actual weapons. Right here. This has a brass knuckle on the front with a huge blade. Then mm -hmm. we got the bullet Not one bad. right here. The okay, that one's gimmicky, but looks cool. Huge meat cleaver. All well, yeah, meat cleaver. It's an improvised weapon. Okay. Oh I'm just going to stop with that because I, I, I could probably point that out every five minutes. Yeah, this one pisses me off so much. This is a 100% Damascus steel knife I made $100 for, and my fingers can't even fit through it. We got... Well, that sucks. I mean, you could have taken a look at this thing and realized it's not worth a hundred bucks, but hey, maybe I'm just a snob. I'm definitely a snob. The classic triad dagger you guys love, and then of course you got the mm -hmm. survival knife. Then we have probably two of the biggest Bowie knives ever. Just some machetes. This is our recent Wish video these were used. And then we get into- Wish? A Did you just say Wish? I wish you didn't say that. And over here we have this Viper Tech butterfly knife, ridiculously sharp. Viper Tech makes a knife sharper than anything you can buy on the retail. I never used it because I want to keep it just that sharp. And then... Why do you want it to be sharp then? 
if you never use it. And over here, we have ah, my EDC, my everyday The injection gear. knife. That is the wasp injection knife. This is the knife that takes the cake. Everything on yes. both these tables never even comes close to the injection knife. Yes. And if you guys don't know what the It's nuts. It's a uh, pretty ridiculous concept. Um, I'm highly skeptical about its effectiveness, but I've never tested it, so I shouldn't say anything. Who knows? <laughs> Unless you've tried it out, you can't really say too much. You can speculate, and my speculation is, it's gimmicky. But hey, Injection it's just me. You insert in there, you see that hole, right? Uh, I don't like how he's holding onto it with a hand and then stabbing toward his hand, basically, with nothing but water in between and a thin layer of plastic. You make don't do that. We got the flail. It was at this moment he knew he fucked up. Ah, oh! Which was not fun. We Yep, that's why you don't want such a long chain. Um, at least if you don't know how to use it. If you follow through, it's not that big of a deal, but this way, yeah. That stuff all looks pretty cheap, so we still have to see how the 25,000 comes together. The Indian War Club, the grail. When it cold steel, probably. It comes to impact. This thing destroys with this little cold steel nipple right there. <laughs> the cold steel nipple, indeed. We got Lucille. Uh, somebody actually sent me this thing right there, the spike club. I tested it on a water bottle and spikes flew off. Water bottle. High quality. We got this whip. I just put this over here because I really know what category this one in. And then we got Fair enough. the grappling hooker. <laughs> the grappling that is hooker. definitely not a weapon. Grappling hooker. I said grappling. We got my favorite thing. The axe, baby. <laughs> Not a weapon. It's a tool. We have the Sprite slash Rick and Morty Portal Hydro Dip Tomahawk. Not gonna lie, that actually looks pretty neat. To me, it looks kind of Ninja Turtle themed. You know, something, something ooze. The ooze axe. Okay, in this case, I can get owning three identical ones. Because if this one throws quite well, I have one of those and... If you want to throw three times before having to go up to the target and retrieve it, then sure. Or in case you lose one or break it or whatever, that makes sense. We're dipped into that. Complete this line very soon. You guys have seen. Yep, I've got that sickle right there. That's actually quite good. Surprisingly well made for the price and the kind of uh, mall ninja tactical theme that it's got going on. Blood red bludgeoning bat right here. This thing's got. I like that one. It's basically like a modern take on a Kanabo or Tetsubo. Yeah, that one would definitely hurt. I don't know how durable it would be, but I would not want to be hit by that, that's for sure. And it's unique enough to fit in a collection. I'm not sure what I think about the bright red, but hey, it's pretty cool either way. The Defiler! You guys wonder the Defiler mm -hmm. the Defiles, I said in the video, okay? This thing is covered in a razor wire, big giant net on top. That's pretty well done. I like that. It looks like it's probably hickory. That's gonna hit pretty hard. The wire, I've never been a fan of the wire. It's just, yeah, it looks gnarly and everything, and uh, it would be great against a naked person. Against clothing, it would just uh, most likely just get stuck and, and just rip fabric, but not really do a whole lot of damage to the person underneath, probably. I mean, superficial damage. Again, it would hurt, but doesn't make that much sense. At the same time, they're also nails sticking out. So yeah, definitely painful. This has got iron rods all the way the entire way around. We got some thin ones, some thick ones for maximum blunt impact. One of the heaviest bats on all of paddle for sure. Yep, that's a proper weapon. They've used stuff like this in World War One in the trenches and uh, yeah, nasty. We did hydro dip this part after the Why episode. though? This was Parker's saw blade bat. This was the one that almost won. We got the app. I mean, hydro dip all the things, I guess. That's Clapper. <laughs> There's only two competitors. Yeah, you always almost won. I'm just trying not to kink shame right now. This thing is the ultimate in discipline. You got <laughs> No, you deserve to be kink shamed. The truck bed metal, and it's all tied up onto a cricket bat for Matt. Okay, jokes aside, that's actually a pretty cool idea. I do like that. As a weapon. Not a bedroom tool. Maximum fast smackage. <laughs> and now we're going but to hey, episode to each their own. This thing right here. The flail bat. I still think it's one of the most creative bats in the entire series. So Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's linked on by a chain with an entire barbed wire on the bottom. And man, it's crazy how tame Okay. 
yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give you props for for the, just the sheer insanity of this thing. It's again one of those things that are probably more intimidating than effective, but it should still hit pretty hard. So, and um, it's for a collection; they're not meant to be used. So, it's all fair game. The Lion X Club, one of my favorite things in the collection. This uh. thing is sick, and it was made by a fan. Okay, I do like the shape of this and the look of it. So it's always gonna have a place it's, in my heart. It looks almost sort of sparkly. This kind of textured. Looks pretty cool. Right here we got a Renaissance era sword, which is freaking hydro dip with his gears on it. You guys remember that? Huh. You know this. Cold. Steel. Okay. Um not something I would personally do with a sword blade, but that hydro dip came up quite nice. Can't deny it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We got a machete. We got the Gladius machete right there. And then we got the rainbow katana, which is not sharp at all. <laughs> it's very ugly. <laughs> then we got a tiger. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I got a machete right here. Also hydro dip. One of your guys' favorite of all time. I've got a weird relationship with the color orange. I hate it. I can't stand anything in orange. Except one time of the year. Halloween. Orange and black. That's the one time I'll accept it. Otherwise, yeah. You got these two <laughs> Scyther arm blade things, which are ah. freaking sick. These came in from Wish. Super scary to use, but also- He said the word again. But I wish somebody actually made a proper high quality functional version of these. Because I actually like those. I actually quite like the concept. Even though it's pretty weird, you can make it work. I've talked about that in a recent video. Like can have some practical value definitely a bit gimmicky definitely a bit try hard edgelord uh, but they're not completely useless in, in practical terms and they are very cool so yeah i wish there were, there were just better ones out there because what you normally see is just made of cheap steel not heat treated and tempered properly not you know shaped properly with regards to blade geometry and all that which is of course fine for most people like i'm the odd one out in that i like to actually test stuff and you know cut tatami mats and water bottles and all this stuff and do armor tests that's not what most people do so for collecting that's really all you need the spear that was able to break yep. through bulletproof glass but it wasn't at yep i've tested that one too and again surprisingly good the you draw you buy bleach katana we got the leonardo wait hang on Hang on, what the hell is this? <sighs> okay. I know Bleach is some weird stuff. Never watched it, but I've seen some bizarre things, and this is easily one of the worst. Two-handed, great sword, which is just like... Yeah, that's probably called steel. Ten plus years ago, I remember seeing a test video where somebody um, swung this around, the blade flew out of it, and almost impaled a camera person. Um... I hope they fix that since then, because otherwise that's quite a hazard. But it's been a long time, so probably outdated. Classic um, Japanese Naginata. Naginata! Okay, I have very mixed feelings about this one. The galaxy pattern is pretty, but on a polearm? Hmm. A full size version. Unfortunately, guys, that one got so damaged from that video. I mean, doing this. Ooh. Oh! Well, no shit. If you abuse it like that, um, see that, folks? That's abuse right there. What I do, that's not abuse. Okay, that's abuse too. Just a different flavor, and it's purposeful. Mm hmm is ridiculous yeah, the mm. we got that is nice giant i don't really know what you call these butcher knives like katanas machetes, um, broccoli and two big sword like objects you we call that sword like objects two blades <laughs> we have a two bladed katana again cool for a collection but uh that's such a stupid idea just whoever came up with this probably some anime writer twice the wait for what in return um Two shallower cuts compared to one deep cut. Oh. Yeah, baby. It's very rusted. It is not easy to take care of a blade of this size. It's but uh, the size doesn't make a difference other than 
you got to spend a little more time. But uh, if you keep it oiled, it's not an issue. This doesn't need to be that rusted. A lot of the stuff I'm seeing is in the, I don't know, 20 to $150 range. But um, yeah, again, can be special limited edition and this and that and the other customization, etc., etc. It's uh, definitely a large collection. Uh, I think my permanent collection right now is probably something like 15. Um, if I count some of the smaller things and whatnot, then it's probably like 20. Like if I count shields as well, which are technically a weapon and not a not armor, something like that. And then on top of that is like another, I don't know, 10 or so in the rotating review pool. Because I, I like to, most of the time when I'm done testing and reviewing something, I like to pass it on because I hate to accumulate that much. I actually like to look at other people's collection, but it's not something I would want to do myself. Just have a huge collection of things where it's like so many that you don't even have the time and patience to maintain them all and keep them clean and not rusted and all that. And uh, also just having the space and all that is just, not to mention, if this is legit $25,000, I, I could never imagine spending that much on a, on a collection like that. It's like, economy is rough, dude. Like $25,000 probably needs to go toward housing. But hey, it's just my personal opinion. This guy clearly enjoys his collection. That's what it's all about. You know, do what makes you happy. And um, yeah, if you want to share it, that's cool. You know, share your your passions and your hobbies and collections and all that. Um, it's good stuff. So hope you found this entertaining as well. Thanks for watching and have a good one.